Giddy to the right, so she doesn't end up in deep space by mistake. Is playing Thanos. You can tell by their deck size. Big deck energy over there. Yeah. I should have snapped them here, I think. Run. Are they face down cards anymore? There's nine cards in their deck. No, they're only 50% to have blob here. Coin flip all the time every day. Oh, sometimes lucky. Rubber ducky. All right, we squeaked one out without drawing Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Jean Grey is actually another card I should probably think about more in this meta game because she is legitimately good into Professor X. Making it, making it so they can't just play that card out wherever they want is uh, pretty good. Matchup. Smack. I'm gonna snap Angela into Jean. Too much for our gamers. One of these days, I'm gonna have enough credits and I'm gonna split this, uh, my 1100 booster gene gray. I don't know that today is that day. Someday. We, I think we've rolled gene gray like four or five times on the random 155 boosters in Conquest. I definitely haven't played 1100 boosters. We played some of them. But definitely the density there is because 
of RNG. A little bit of an awkward combination. Jean Grey active in the Nebula Lane. That is not an option now. I'm gonna save Enchantress for next turn because I want to um, do that while Dream Dimension is up, I think. them this turn. Well, I guess awkwardly, if I Enchantress next turn, it will make me turn off their Electro. That's a nice one to get rid of. Correctively. Couldn't happen to an icer card, so long I have. I'm gonna fill the right, because they are likely a Century Nihilist duck. They lost Miss Marvel. Like another lockout gamer.
I'll stack on the ham draw all the same, I think. Start triggering Elsa on four, we'll get a few points out of her. Shadow King is likely to have a ton of text in this matchup, so I think I just do this. Alternatively, I do this to leave a little bit more points here. This is probably better. Bud. They move Nightcrawler, I lose to Eliath. So probably just have to leave. They drew Gamora off of the Iron Lad. Are they smart enough to move the Nightcrawler? Us across the finish line here. Do rules all. Thank you, bud. Sometimes you got the soul read that they just don't understand. So this was 100% a snap. They thought their Gamora was going to grab priority and they were going to lock us with a live. to Jean looking to draw Kitty Bright here to pull our opposite locations here very safe very dangerous Elsa plus Jeff would also be excellent pickups Elsa plus Kitty oh, snap. a snap on that Kitty Bright draw here This is probably bad for them too, but the G Gray is gonna jack him up. Sibilus, thank you for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I 
think I like just porking on curve in this deck consistently simply because uh, we're an Elsa deck. So like starting to fill a location up early has value. Although we're obviously not filling that one now. Stone into draw mode on Nico. Super strong start here for the opponent. Very surprised they didn't press the button. They missed a Nova Roma draw here, so that's nice for us. I don't think I want to move Jeff for Miles. Tempo the Shadow King against their uh, pull off deck, though. Tried and true, classic, everybody's cards can be everywhere. Throw doodles at the wall and see what sticks. So this can bat like a vision or this Iron Lad Jeff away. number of permutations of this we lose, but there's also permutations that we win. This is one of the permutations we lose, because they played a blob on the right. I'm losing the middle by one. I'm gonna flip-flop these, we win the game. Bad man. I think this Jean Grey plan is typically good in this matchup if they don't have six power Jeff into vision. That gives them an incredible amount of counterplay to our disruption. Is okay. Escaped. The D the DC makes their demon bigger. So I think I want a second kitty. 
yet. I don't think I want a second kitty yet. Sorry, apologies. Clear, clear that verbiage up. Take a uh, pile of else's though. Probably not supposed to stay. It's just another Psylocke, right? Set up the extracts. Oh my god! <laughs> some, some RNG right there. Even had the Professor X and got got greedy and wanted to play the Iron Lad instead of guaranteeing the turn for Professor X, so they just like got to guarantee it anyways. that we tag their blob or their alliance. Okay. They've only drawn half their deck. Statistically speaking, they don't have their alliance, right? Sometimes lucky rubber ducky. I, I actually, I think it's, this is so, something that I think is worth pointing out, and this is something that's very easy to show in this extreme example, is people, myself included, will sometimes cite play, play rates and win rates of cards on here. And they'll use it as reference points for if a card's too good or not. And Spider Ham, in my opinion, is one of the best cards in Marvel Snap right now. It's very strong. It wins you lots of games like that one. Where's he? Where's he? I don't mean, oh, there he is. It has an absolutely abysmal abysmal average cubes of win rate on here despite being incredibly popular and i think part of the reason why you see this is because spider ham is such a splashable card you actually see similar things it's never been this detrimental and negative on a tech card before but like take uh shang chi for example shang chi is a card that's incredibly popular and is very, very strong. It only has an okay win rate at 52%. Uh, Shadow King, I think, is usually pretty similar. Oh, he's actually a little bit higher, actually. But, like, no one will ever tell you that, like, Shang-Chi's not a great card despite only being a 52% win rate. And part of the reason why the win rates of these incredibly strong cards that don't have strong synergies tend to be low is because they go into a bunch of different decks, right? So like Shang-Chi, Spider-Ham, etc., are being shoved into decks where 
Um, the rest of the deck isn't very good, but they're just like a one-off card you don't have to build around. So those decks that are mediocre still try to play the good cards to prop themselves up, but their existence pulls the win rates of those still strong technology cards downward. Zero. Shuri Gamer, maybe? Zero flame? Again. Kitty. Kitty? Kitty? Are they a uh, weird Cerebro 3? Smells like weird Cerebro 3, eh? Jeff here, and then we'll move one of these next turn, probably, to play Miles on the last turn. We'll set ourselves up to be able to go Kitty, Miles, plus a final play on the last turn of the game. Or we'll play Miles this turn for four energy. Or do I just spider hand them? I do this. There's a good chance this hits a Cerebro if they don't play it this turn. I am Iron Man. Even if they go three power card into Cerebro, there's only a 10 on the right. We're good. They could... They could go one drop plus Valk me, I guess? And that will put us 12 to 12 and then they win the tiebreaker. Locked in. If I do this, I go down to 11, and then I gain 6 up to 17. This beats one drop Valk over here. I don't think they're on Killmonger with Zero and Blade in their deck. God, my brain is fucking huge sometimes. Victory. So we played, we played to slightly less power here because slightly less power meant that we were still beating three energy, three power card plus Cerebro. And this meant they could tiebreaker. We had to play here to beat the tiebreaker.